In this video, we're going to look at how to use the PowerShell Universal Visual Studio Code Extension. Uh, this code extension uh, integrates with PowerShell Universal via the management API to allow you to edit scripts locally, um, run jobs from Visual Studio Code, and um, edit your dashboards. So to get the Visual Studio Code extension, you can either install it from the Visual Studio Marketplace, or you can come into Visual Studio Code yourself and click Extensions and search for the PowerShell Universal um, uh, extension. So we also recommend you have um, PowerShell installed as well to get like the full editing experience. So once this is installed, um, what we're going to need to do is actually uh, connect Visual Studio Code to um, PowerShell Universal. So there's two ways to do that, and I'm going to show you both of them. Um, first of all, we're going to go over to um, PowerShell Universal and log in. So I will log into my admin console. And the way that the Visual Studio Code extension works is it actually uses uh, app tokens to communicate with the management API. So it needs to know the URL of your server, and it needs to have a valid app token. So you can see the URL of my server is localhost 5000, which is just the default value. And you can actually come into um, settings, configuration, and at the top right corner here, you'll see this edit with VS Code button. So what that's going to do is it's actually going to generate an app token and then send the URL of your server down to Visual Studio Code. So let's click that. Um, it's uh, saying that it wants to open Visual Studio Code, so we click that. Now Visual Studio Code is saying, do you want to open this URL? So we're going to say OK. And now um, the Visual Studio Code extension has been configured. So you can actually close these dialogues. If you're not configured and you try to uh, access the extension, it's going to pop up this dialog with some more information. So now on the left hand side, you'll see this uh, PowerShell Universal uh, Activity Bar button. And if we click that, you'll see that we now have um, a default connection. So that default connection is to my PowerShell Universal uh, instance. And because that's connected, I can now see my APIs, I can see my scripts, I can see the jobs that have been run, um, I can see my dashboards, components, and frameworks, and I can even view configuration files. So if I want to see my authentication uh, configuration file, I can open it in here. So what's nice about this now is I have the Visual Studio uh, editing experience. So um, since I have the PowerShell extension installed, I get IntelliSense and um, syntax highlighting and PS Script Analyzer support and everything like that. And any changes that you make um, to these files will actually be saved back up to the PowerShell Universal server, uh, as long as you don't have like one-way git sync on or something like that. So that's one way to configure your connection. The other way that you can configure your connection is directly inside Visual Studio Code. So um, if you hit Control Shift P to open up the command palette and search for the uh, Open Settings UI, uh, inside here we can actually select Extensions and go to PowerShell Universal, and you'll find all the settings for the PowerShell Universal uh, extension. And you can see here that we have this app token set, and we have um, our URL set. So um, that happened when I clicked the uh, Edit with VS Code button. It actually automatically um, configured that for me. Uh, the other thing you could do is actually get that app token yourself, um, and that is found in Security um, Tokens. And you can see here I have an app token right here, and I can just copy that value and put it into my settings inside uh, the VS Code extension. Uh, the VS Code extension also supports multiple connections, so this is just the default connection, but I can also click this Connections, Edit, and Settings JSON button, and that's going to actually insert this um, connections uh, section here. And what I could do inside here is actually define multiple connections. If you hit control space, you're going to get IntelliSense. And from there, I can start to add new connections. So if I had like a remote machine that I wanted to communicate with, I would set my app token in here. And then I would set my URL, which, you know, might be some uh, remote server um, that is running PowerShell Universal. And once you save that, you can actually hit this little refresh button and your second connection will pop up. And then you can click this connect button to switch in between the two different um, connections. So in this way, you could have you know, multiple PowerShell Universal instances all configured in a single um, VS Code instance. But we're just going to use this default connection. Um, and we're going to look at some of the features of this now that it's connected. So we're going to go to our API here. And I will click this edit uh, endpoint 
button. And what that does is it actually opens the contents of that endpoint um, directly in uh, VS Code. So now you can see I have uh, process, get process, I have a wait for debugger command. And if I wanted to like remove that wait for debugger command, I could save this. And if I go back to PowerShell Universal and go to my APIs, edit details, you're gonna see that wait debugger command is now gone. So it is actually live editing the files um, inside your PowerShell Universal instance. And just so you understand how this works, um, and it's not magic, this is actually an open source extension, so you can actually go look at the code for how this works. But you can see we've saved um, this temporary file into universal.code endpoints um, locally. And inside our extension, we're just watching to see if that file changes. And if it does, then we're just making a, a, an HTTP request back to the PowerShell Universal server um, with the updated script. So um, it is not like totally live editing. It's just kind of communicating back and forth with your um, PowerShell Universal instance. So the other thing that you can do uh, in this view is click uh, insert invoke rest to method to console and that will actually uh, based on what type of rest method this is it's going to insert that directly into your console so then you could execute it in here um, the other things that you can do are edit the uh, endpoints.ps1 file so this is just would include all your endpoints if you had multiple endpoints you could just edit them all in one place um, the other thing you can do is click this button to actually navigate to the endpoints page all right so let's look, take a look at scripts. So if you go into the automation section, you'll have uh, your scripts, which will all be listed here, and then any jobs that were run. You can click one of your scripts, and you'll see that it uh, opens that script, and just like with APIs, you can edit them directly in here, and they'll save back to the PowerShell Universal uh, console. The other thing that you can do is you can run your scripts. So this little run button, if we click that, you can see in the bottom right here, it says job 35 started. If I click view job, I can go look at that job. The other things that we can do um, in here, and see now it says the job succeeded, is we actually can receive output from these jobs. So if I went to script uh, PS1 and I get click this get job pipeline output, it's actually going to put some PowerShell universal commandlet calls into um, my console here. And you can see it called get uh, PSU job pipeline output, and it returned what that job output so that will actually return objects to you if you you know like for example called like get service or something like that in one of your scripts it's actually going to return that and actually we can look at that um, so let's open this one and i will call it get service we'll save that we will run it and if we go here you can see that our get service call ran inside powershell universal and that completed successfully so if we do a little refresh here, we can see our job appeared. And if I click the get P job pipeline output, you'll see now we have all the services actually from our um, job directly inside our console. So, you know, you can use this um, by storing in variables and then continue scripting as you would um, otherwise. So yeah, now here's my services. Oops, if I could type uh, inside a variable. Uh, the other thing you can do are, is uh, view the log. So if I click this, it's actually going to download the log from the PowerShell Universal server, and you're going to actually go to the um, console to see what was output. So that will just appear in here. Um, additionally, like you could with APIs, if you click this button, you can view scripts.ps1 to edit like properties of the scripts, and you can also navigate out to the scripts page by clicking that button there. All right, let's look at dashboards. So dashboards uh, can be edited uh, directly in the Visual Studio Code extension as well. And you just click this open dashboard file. And from here, we can make changes to our dashboard. And if you have auto deploy on, it will automatically um, update your dashboard. And then you can click view to actually view your dashboard. Um, this little restart button will actually restart it. So if you don't have auto deploy on, um, you'll have to do that after you save the file. Um, and you can also see things like components and frameworks that you have installed. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of like the basics of dashboards. And if you do want to uh, edit the dashboards.ps1, you can click this file and you can edit properties about your dashboard. So what's handy is you could install the um, universal dashboard uh, PowerShell module, and then you'll have all the um, IntelliSense and everything like that um, directly inside uh, VS Code. So. 
you know, you start typing, you hit that, and you can see that I have um, information about this commandlet. All right, so um, the other things that are inside this extension include uh, access to configuration files. So we kind of looked at this. I can edit my authentication.ps1, for example. So any configuration file that you have um, within your um, PowerShell Universal instance, you can edit in here. Uh, the other thing that we have are samples as well. So you can actually navigate our sample repository. And if you click this, um, this view sample on GitHub button, it'll actually take you out to GitHub and you can see all our samples. So um, it's just a bunch of like really basic samples of different functionality inside PowerShell Universal. Um, we're definitely open to issues and pull requests if you do have additional samples that you want to uh, include. Uh, finally, there are some help and information links that um, we kind of include everywhere. So if you want to jump out to the documentation forums, uh, hit the support page, or find out about pricing about PowerShell Universal, you can find that under the help and information page. So the last thing I want to talk about are just some additional settings that you can, uh, that you can do. Um, first, uh, checking modules that's on by default. That means we're going to check to make sure that the Universal and Universal Dashboard modules are installed and updated to the, the latest version uh, when this extension starts. So it's actually going to go out to the PowerShell gallery and do that. So if you don't want that happening, uncheck that. Um, local editing is actually uh, useful if you're running PowerShell Universal on the exact same server as where your VS Code instance is. So rather than using the REST API, it's actually going to edit the files directly on disk, and it won't send them back up to uh, the REST API. So uh, that's only if you're running VS Code on the same server as your PowerShell Universal instance. Um, we have that off by default. Uh, the samples directory is kind of where we get those samples from, so or where we store the samples from the GitHub repository on your local disk. So we're actually storing them in the roaming directory. And you can turn off um, whether or not you want to sync samples when the extension starts. Uh, and finally, we have the URL and app token for PowerShell Universal. So in this video, we went through the PowerShell uh, Universal Visual Studio Code extension and how to use it to configure and manage your PowerShell Universal instance.